I have 7 o'clock and I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order and ask that the clerk please call roll. Mr. Jim Minaj. Present via Skype. Mr. Jeff Elshoff. Here. Mr. Jeff Hawes. Here. Ms. Betty Martin. Here. Mr. Justin Smith. Here. We do have a quorum, so we'll get started with our regularly scheduled meeting of our October 1st uh, meeting for your Bel Air City Council. I'm going to ask uh, Father Shem to come forward and um, offer the uh, prayer, like we do. Um, but before we, uh, he does that, I'm going to ask uh, that everyone join us in a, a moment of silence. Um, since our last meeting, we, uh, uh, last, uh, we lost a good friend to Bel Air, uh, former Mayor Dale Walters. Um, uh, passed away. He was our third mayor, and I was uh, able to attend his uh, uh, service on Saturday in it, uh, during the storm. And I have uh, his uh, card here if anybody would like to, to see that or send information for the memorial. But um, if you'd join us in a moment of silence remembering former Mayor Dale Walters, please. Amen. Thank you. Father? Thank you for your invitation to lead you in prayer this evening. We begin with a letter, um, a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. By obedience to the truth, you have purified yourself, yourselves for a genuine love of your brothers. Therefore, love one another constantly from the heart. Your rebirth has come not from a destructible, but from an indestructible seed through the living and enduring word of God. Let us pray. Father of mercy, hear our evening prayer of praise and let our hearts never waver from the love of your law. Lead us on through night's darkness to the dawning of eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now please stand and join us in the same Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have any additions to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move into our consent agenda. Uh, Councilmember Martine made a comment. She says, "Ooh, short agenda," but <laughs> we know that sometimes short agendas can <laughs> uh, have some of the most discussion. Uh, tonight, we do have a public hearing. We're going to hear a report from our city engineer. We're going to consider a master walk and bike plan. And we're going to look at an ordinance on special assessments and discuss water main upgrades and also uh, discuss, uh, I will let council know that uh, October 8th is not going to work uh, for our workshop. So when that time comes, we'll, I'll ask that we look at other dates so that we can have an October workshop. Um, first thing to come before council this evening are the minutes of the September 17th, 2019 City Council meeting. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I move to approve the consent agenda as listed and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. Second. We have a first and a second. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Those same sign. Okay. And next is probably one of the biggest appropriations ordinance I think I've ever seen. <laughs> but uh, that is uh, 750000 of that is to the city of Wichita. I do want to point out. This is for the, uh, the project uh, 37th Street from Woodlawn to Oliver. Um, you know, Wampo funded 80%. Wichita and Bel Air each paid uh, the remaining 10% on that, seven, uh, which is why, like I said, there's a $750,000 payment in there. Um, Wichita covered the initial cost, and now the project's complete, so we're reimbursing them for our share. That the GL bond we are currently working on will allow for long-term financing and pay back the reserve amount uh, being spent. So 
This is a great example, I just want to say, of partnering uh, with our neighbor, uh, Wichita, to replace 37th Street, which is actually a Bel Air Road. So I know $750,000, but it's actually quite a bargain. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying all that. So, but are there any questions or comments about Appropriations Ordinance 19 19? Not, I would entertain a motion. Just right here. Yes. I move to approve Appropriations Ordinance 19 19. Second. First and second. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. City requested appearances. I do not have any cards in front of me. But we will move into a uh, public hearing. Um, for this, the uh, purpose of uh, the public hearing is to give those property owners being special assessed for public infrastructure the opportunity to share any concerns regarding the amount being spread. Uh, petitions were accepted from the developer to install the infrastructure, which allows the city to spread these assessments. Um, is there anyone in the audience wishing to who or who would like to speak on their special assessments amount okay i would ask um that you come to the podium we'll form a line over there against the uh the north wall there and uh we'll let you come up first and we ask uh, during the public hearing if you state your uh, name and address And I will tell you, I see that our, uh, where did Ted run off to? Is he? He's over there. Okay, Ted's here and Kevin Cowan is here. So um, since it is a public hearing, if there's questions, I'll warn you right now, I'm probably going to deflect your way. So <laughs> for that, but sir, we'll let you go ahead and start. Uh, I own a piece of property and I'm not going to try to <laughs> tell you the legal description. It is the piece of property that is the southwest corner of 53rd and uh, Webb Road. It is a farmland. It has been farmed for the 40 years that I've owned it, and I'm leasing it to the gentleman that's farming it. There are no improvements of any kind on it. It's simply farmland. And I have no reason to believe there's any improvement that the city or activities that the city could provide me for that land. So I'm totally against the assessment. It's also the county. It's not, it's not in the city. Right there, yeah. I'm sorry? Telling it's not in the city of Bel Air. Oh, yeah. It is not, in fact, in the city of Bel Air at this time. <clears throat> And, I'm sorry, and can you state your name and address? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. Yeah. I'm James Woolley, half of the ownership of that property. The other half's at home doing dinner <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and uh, I uh, live at 819 West Andover, or I'm sorry, West Verona Court in Andover. Thank you. Will that entitle me to go away now? <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to, yeah. Okay. But I appreciate we, we, we've recorded your comments. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. Next, come on up, sir. And welcome. Hi, my name is Don Herb. I live at 5339 North Rock Spring Court. Uh, yeah, I'm part of that uh, special assessment. I guess my question is, uh, I talked to Ted on the phone, and he said this was phase four. Uh, so evidently there was a phase one, two, and three in Rock Spring area. Uh, were they assessed extra tax money after all was said and done, after all the streets and water improvements and everything was put in? I guess that's what this extra eleven thousand or ten thousand, excuse me, uh, ten thousand nine hundred eighty-five dollars on top of the special assessments that we paid when we bought the house. Mm 
I know, and we do have specials that are, um, you know, the developer, you know, puts those in place when they're developing that. Um, I'm going to ask um, either city manager or uh, our CFO or Mr. Cowan, if one of you three would like to answer his which, question which, specifically. Which, which, where are you talking about? The about phase Rock one, phase two, phase three, yeah. Uh -huh. Phase four? Yeah. And you're wanting to know what the, uh, I guess it's for the upgrade of streets and water, uh -huh. so which has already been put in. So the court would be what It's the cul-de-sac cul right off Rock Spring uh -huh. Street. Uh -huh. I think like I say we paid specials when I bought the house. It's included in my mortgage. Yes, uh, yes. So. And that's. Oh. Mr. Manager, you okay. wanted to say something? Yeah, so I think, oh, while well, Ted's thinking about the numbers, I, uh, as, as this gentleman is stating, there are, there are several phases over there. Um, sometimes what will happen is um, that they'll go in and do all the stormwater and the drainage first, and then a special assess that. And then, so there is a special assessment on there for the the whole drainage of the development. And then as the phases come along that has the streets, um, that has a sewer and the water mains and such, then those are added to it. So I'm not sure if that's what it is. Ted can look up for sure. But I know that has happened in the past that um, a lot of times they'll do a large area at once um, and then when the specific cul-de-sacs or blocks come on, they'll do that. So yeah. that's, that's exactly. It. Did you see the the amount you're paying right now? I believe all those um, properties. It's pretty minimal. Maybe um, I can look it up really quick. If you if you're if asking I the question, right? Um, com compared to your neighbors, is that what you're <laughs> basically what you're asking? Is are you paying more than your neighbors? No, no. Everybody's everybody's getting. Uh, tax the same for 18 lots here uh -huh. in uh, mm -hmm. Rock Spring Court. So that first special assessment was how so, much uh, for drainage, and then this additional 10,000 is for the streets and the sewer. Exactly. Water. Okay. Streets and water. Streets and water. Okay. Yeah. Right now, it's at about 51 dollars a month for all the drainage, the sewer, um, and the whole development, kind of like I was saying. And then now that we did your specific house, water, and, and uh, paving, then that would be an, another uh, special assessment on top of so, that. So, OK, I figured it up. And sure. I think uh, over 30-year note, I'll be paying 17930 for the main one I got. And 30-year principal is 10,694 on top of this 10,985. So actually, the 10,694 was just for the uh, drainage, sewer. <laughs> yeah. So when we go through the phases, we don't. And and the developer actually is the one who comes in and says, you know, for the special assessments, and we approve them. When we do the, the paving or we do the sewer, yeah, so it's not all at once. Okay. So that's how it's broken so down. That's just, that was just mainly the uh, sewer and uh, water. So this is basically for the street in front and the water lines. Water lines. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we didn't pay for that initially. Right. Correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess that answers my question. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. My name is Amy Maines, and I live at 5299 North Rock Spring Court. Um, my family and I just relocated from Texas. We actually just moved into our home in June. Um, and I have our closing documents with me. Um, our special assessments that show that we paid for sewer, sidewalk, stormwater drain, and paving of the 53rd Street um, show that our assessments for that, 
total $9,966.45 that we still owe that the people previously living in our home did not pay. And then we also received the letter that uh, Don received for more special assessments to be added into our home, onto our home. So that brings our total special assessments to, let me find my number, sorry, $20,952.87. So in my closing documents, it does state that we paid for part of that. I'm just surprised that it is so high. And if part of it has been paid, why are we getting assessed again with even more? I think $20,000 is almost $21,000 is a lot of money. <laughs> so we don't have to pay special taxes in Texas. So I guess the question is, is um, why? <laughs> and yeah, how can we fix it? <laughs> I was going to say, it's interesting that you, you bring that up. And city manager and I have had a number of conversations with you know, developers from other states. And we mentioned special assessments. And they all say, huh? What? Yeah. Uh, so your question is valid. It is uh, fairly unique. This is something, you know, when developers come in, and I'm going to ask the city manager, correct me if I'm wrong, city attorney here, um, and when we approve, you know, the special assessments here, it's, you know, it's not the city here saying mm -hmm. this is whatever. It's the developer when they come in and build it out, then, you know, there's the lot fee and then the, then the, the special assessments. And um, I know when I bought my house, um, it was 15, 16 years old, and that was part of my negotiation was there was four years left on the specials, and that was, you know, they, they just, these developments have that, they cover, and like the gentleman before was saying, the different phases, that's why it's coming in in different chunks here, and, you know, but this is the fourth one, and I think at the end of this, there will be no more special assessments um, on that, but yeah, this is the development, they put it in there so that it's broken down and, and covered, and that's part of, part of, um, I guess the developers cost when they sold and built the, the house. So, Mr. Mayor, if yeah, I could please. explain a little bit. Um, so the difference that you'll see, and, and like the mayor said, really South Central Kansas is the only area that typically does special assessments. You go to Johnson County, they don't. Um, but what you'll notice is uh, when you're buying a house, um, or if you're building a house, you purchase the lot, and the lot may be twenty or thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. And then, if you go to a place where they don't have specials, the lot's probably sixty thousand. Mm -hmm. And so, what happens is, the developer pays for all those specials up front, and then just adds it to the cost of the lot. So that's what you'll see a difference in the, the price of that. Now, now, your other question about the uh, the, the the closing documents. Um, Kevin Cowan's here, a bond counsel, but my assumption without seeing those is that it states that there were petitions um, for water, sewer, streets, and stormwater. Um, and I'm not sure that it specifically states, or it maybe should, that, um, that some of those are assessed, like the gentleman before, and then the other ones are coming due. Is that correct, Kevin? To create the benefit district, uh, the petition and the succeeding resolution have to be recorded with the register of deeds to give notice to anybody that's dealing in the property transaction. If the assessments are already in place, uh, then they get recorded. Those should, and it sounds like they were, they, you saw the $9,900. Yeah. Uh, the, when these special assessments get approved, they get recorded. Uh, certified so that you know, from this point forward, anybody that's dealing in this transaction will know exactly these are the specials. Uh, we're not there yet, so in, in your particular case, you would have known about these specific special assessments that have been reported and certified by the city, and then there should have been something that, that showed that the property is also subject to additional special assessments under these resolutions. Uh, I know the resolutions were recorded. Uh, that's one of the things that has to happen for the temporary note transcript to be approved. Um, and that's what is there to give you to give you notice. Um, if it wasn't there, I don't have an expl explanation. Maybe it's the title company, maybe it's the seller. I'm not not sure. But that's that's the city's role. They have to record it um, to give notice of anybody dealing in that property. From that point forward, it's subject to a special assessment under resolution number whatever. Of the city, and in this 
case of this resolution. Number 16-11 and 16-12 should, should show up somewhere in the title. Well, I'm going to go investigate for sure because it does impact our mortgage at almost $1,000 a month um, just for special assessments, and I think that's a little extreme. It's a lot. So, um, I mean, anything we can do just to, to alleviate that, it's quite an impact on our family. So, dollars a month. Well, a year, I mean, a year. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're. Right. I'm sorry. I don't want you to say. Oh, yeah. Say, yeah. No, it is. Month, kind of, we need to look into that. Quite a bit, but I will yeah, check yeah. it to make sure. So, thank you. Wonderful. We appreciate you attending and asking your questions. Is there anyone else wishing to uh, to speak now on the special assessments while the public hearing is still open? Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Mayor, yes. I am curious. Um, the gentleman that talked about the special assessments on the farmland, I don't know that we got clear information as to how the special assessments uh, might impact the farmland. Can we get some clarification on that before we close the public hearing? Yeah. Mr. Cowan, I'm going to ask if he could come forward. And uh, <clears throat> for those here, Kevin Cowan, this is our uh, bond council. So. I don't have an answer. Um, <laughs> If that property is unplatted and not within the city limits, then it shouldn't be part right, of the I'm benefit saying. district. Uh, and I'm guessing maybe it was included in the original petition resolution somehow. Um, but I think Ted and I maybe will do a little bit of work before you get to the ordinance and figure out whether it should be there or whether we're missing something. Because uh, again, if it's I know the prime you probably know the projects we're talking about it sort of contemplates the development that's happening happening in that direction and there are some tracks and there are actually some tracks that have since been planted um, since those petitions were submitted uh, but again if it's just farm ground and it's not within the city limits um, I don't think it should be there and so if you'll give us a few minutes to do some research maybe even on the GIS and, and figure that out I think maybe by the time get to the ordinance we'll have it so. okay and, and I'll just say I know you know we've got reports and it's item B of, of a of a three section agenda but I'm gonna speak for the counselor I think we're okay holding tight on that until we because we definitely want to clarify that and I appreciate you sir for bringing that concern here and asking about the farmland because that's uh, interesting on that so any so, other uh, yeah anything else for the public hearing I move to close the public hearing Second. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. And for all of you uh, still in the audience, this is the time we open up our meeting like we do every uh, meeting to citizens concerns. If there's anyone in the audience wishing to address council on an agenda item, you're more than welcome to uh, do so at this time. Seeing none, we'll move on to reports, and we'll start with Council Member Hawes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the only thing I have is, is at 6 o'clock today in the, in the Bel Air City Hall, um, kind of, I guess, uh, there was a presentation uh, about the riverfront property in downtown Wichita. Um, they're kind of going around to all the neighboring communities, and, and it, this is kind of a, a regional draw. So. Um, just kind of getting input, kind of going over what they are thinking about. This has to do with the, the west or the east bank of the, uh, of the river where Century 2 is and the Performing Arts Center. So, um, you know, it, it definitely has a lot more to do with than just Wichita. Um, you know, it was very informative, some great information. Um, I, I would, you know, suggest everybody go to uh, www riverfrontlegacywichita.org and kind of look at the information themselves. It's great information. Um, you know, and it's interesting that that uh, they're kind of in the same place as us as far as, you know, everybody saying that a, a gathering spot, a natural gathering spot is a, is a major need for, for not just small towns but big towns. So, um, you know, I, I recommend everybody go check it out. It's, uh, it's very informative. So uh, that is all I have, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. Council Member Benaj? No report this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Martin? No report, Mayor. 
Councilmember Smith. I also have a new report. Councilmember Elsoff. Mr. Mayor, I do have a brief report. Um, September 26th, I attended the Chisholm Creek Utility Authority uh, Committee meeting. Um, we did have uh, a couple items come across our uh, uh, committee. Um, I guess the main one being um, one of uh, another uh, water well that Bel Air owns is being um, refurbished or having preventive preventative maintenance performed on it. So that was a little bit of uh, money we had to spend on that. Um, and then also uh, in the last few months, we asked for additional uh, requests for proposals for the sewage treatment plant overhaul. And uh, we did get some additional design um, proposals from a, a few firms that's currently being reviewed by the, the TAC and uh, we're sort of waiting for some feedback on that. Uh, so um, the ball is rolling on that, although it is, it is slow and we're assessing what our, all of our options are. Uh, but that uh, concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it, thank you. I have no formal report tonight other than just want to, again, uh, let you guys know I had the honor of attending uh, Mayor Walter's uh, fu uh, funeral mass on uh, Saturday. Um, it's a beautiful uh, Greek uh, uh, Orthodox uh, Catholic Church. And the, uh, when the, the priest, one of the fir very first things he said, he kind of opened the, the service saying, you know, and Dale decided to run for mayor and why would you do that when automatically 50% of the people are going to be upset with you? And I thought, <laughs> okay, this will be a <laughs> great service. But um, it, was a, it was a lovely service um, for that. And again, I do have a, a, his memorial card up here for that. Uh, then a couple of other things to piggyback on what Councilmember Haas said. It was great to uh, welcome. Part of the presentation here was um, Senate County Manager Tom Stoltz was here. Uh, Cedric County Commissioner Pete Meitzner. Um, actually, he and I had the conversation about this, uh, uh, what, six, seven, eight weeks ago. And also the uh, Go Wichita CEO, Susie Santo, was here. Uh, to, uh, and they had great things to say about the growth here in Bel Air. And uh, again, it was interesting here. We're talking the major, you know, millions of dollars in the River Corridor. And they're going as far out as, you know, McPherson and other places t taking this because they do know it impacts uh, the region and the state, but that the uh, that there were so many similarities between what they need with the the natural gathering spots, along with the green spaces too, and, and everything um, for that. And uh, I do have a card here too, if anybody wants to take a picture, or get notes for that to uh, follow, uh, get more information on that. And then the CCUA meeting that uh, Councilmember Elsoff uh, spoke about. Thursday, I also attended, and uh, David Floyd sat in for our other member, uh, Ken Lee. And I have just want to let everybody know I've had conversations with uh, Ken Lee since then, who, like I said, is the other member. So he's brought up to date on what we're going to do, looking at those RFPs uh, for the, the sewage treatment there and uh, the engineering plants there. And um, Ann Stephen was there as well. And we're so the TAC is going to take the first round with it, and then we're going to have. Uh, members from each city, you know, they're going to kind of winnow it down to, uh, was it three, I think, because there were seven that bid, so we're going to narrow it down to three. And with the idea, knowing that we're going to get into the holidays here pretty soon, but that we should have a suggestion uh, to the CCUA um, by March, I think, was the, the time landing. Again, this is something we've known about for a while and been budgeting for and planning for, so um, that's coming up. And then uh, everybody... October is going to be a very busy month. Uh, this Saturday, the curbside cleanup starts at 7 a.m. So if you have big items that you want um, uh, to have hauled off, um, please uh, have those um, outside your curb or on your curb there the night before. And Waste Connections will come around and get that. The brush site, I think, is open for the final time this year. Um, October 12th from 9 to 1, and that's there on 53rd Street in between Rock and Webb. 
And then, I know it doesn't feel like it, but it will tomorrow. Fall, I think, is finally here. I can't wait. Um, we'll have great plans. We'll let uh, Elizabeth will help us pick out all of our fall decorations, and <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun. Now that it'll feel like fall, but the uh, fall festival is October 19th um, at 10 a.m. at the Rec Center. So everybody, please have those on your uh, calendar. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do not have a report this evening. City manager. Thank you, Mayor. I have a few items just to let the public uh, aware of some things. As you mentioned, the uh, curbside cleanup is this Saturday, so uh, make sure everything's out by 7 a.m. Uh, the things that they will accept is general trash, furniture, um, bundled brush or limbs, appliances, um, electrical items, outdoor items, mattresses, um, refrigerators, freezers, air conditioning, as long as the Freon has, has been removed and they're tagged. So those are really large items that um, can be accepted. Um, and the things they won't accept are like car batteries, uh, oil filters, fluorescent, fluorescent light bulbs, um, propane tanks, anything with asbestos in it, um, paint, um, hazardous liquid, those things. Of course, there is a hazardous uh, waste site that uh, uh, Cedric County runs that people can take, take to. Um, so again, that's uh, Saturday. Um, there are two candidate forms that are coming up this month. Uh, the first one is October 7th at the Rec Center, and that's hosted by the Bel Air Senior Club. And the Bel Air Area Chamber of Commerce is holding another uh, forum on the 24th at 7 p.m. here at City Hall. So those are coming up. Um, as the mayor mentioned, the Fall Festival is the 19th, so put that on your, your uh, calendar. Uh, 10 to 2, they're going to have a uh, petting zoo, <coughs> trunk or treats for the kids, uh, vendor fair, car show, all kinds of things that they typically have. So that's, that's always a good time. Um, would like to thank our um, finance director and chief of police for getting a grant. Uh, from the federal government for the purchase of bulletproof vests um, and it's a 50% grant so we every year we budget to replace um, bulletproof vests they only last a certain amount of time uh, plus uh, you may not be aware but the officers wear those underneath their shirts and in the middle of the summer they get pretty hot and uh, sweaty and things like that so Every few years we replace those, and so it's always nice to get a grant to cover that cost. It was $1,600, and that's for 2020. So, um, did get notice from Waste Connections that they are moving to 65 gallon recycle carts. So, it's not going to affect what everybody has now, but any new um, customers or anyone that needs their recycle cart replaced will get a 65 instead of a 90 gallon. Now our contract states that they have to provide uh, up to 90 gallons, so if someone does recycle a lot and would like two of the 65 gallons, they can certainly ask for that and it's no charge. So if everybody, what you have now, you'll keep any new customers, um, will get the 65 gallon. And, uh, and then if you have yours re replaced, it'll, it'll change. So just to let everybody aware of that, it only affects the new people coming to town. But uh, if someone has a cart that they need replaced. And then the last thing, if anybody's interested in flu shots, um, pneumonia or shingle vaccine, vaccines, the, um, the senior center here is going to be hosting those on October 8th uh, in the community room. And it is from 2 to 3 p.m. So all they ask is you bring an ID card, uh, insurance card, Medicaid card, or whatever with you. Um, so that's a, a nice thing that our citizens can utilize, hopefully, here at City Hall. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I don't have any committees or boards or commission reports. As Commissioner uh, Elsoff and I spoke about CCUA. We'll move to uh, Public Works, and our city engineer, Ann Stevens, has some uh, pretty exciting news to share with us. 
I put a staff report in front of your stations, and Jim, I emailed one to you, so hopefully you were able to get that. KDOT has announced a pretty exciting program that has just started. Um, they are adding a cost share program for transportation. So this would be streets, um, sidewalks, bike lanes, rail, like that. They are planning on an $11 million program with a 15% state match that they're planning on continuing. But they've also added a one-time bonus to the pot of $50 million. So these, this funding pot is available for pretty much anybody to go after. It's, it's geared towards projects that are not priority under their other programs. So we currently qualify for a lot of KDOT money through WAMPO, the Wichita Area Metropolitan Planning Organization and their federal STP funds, and I can't remember what that acronym stands for, so I apologize. So we, we, we qualify for quite a few under that, but some of the projects that I was thinking of specifically for this project, or for this funding, is the 53rd Street project. We did submit it to WAMPO, but it's not a very high priority project for that funding. I, I want to stick with Woodlawn, getting additional funding for Woodlawn and then the Rock Road project is really focusing on those on that for WAMPO funds. But 53rd from Woodlawn to Oliver, the road is deteriorating. As you've heard, it was originally poor, which originally put down as a cold mix asphalt, which is used for low volume roads. That's not a low volume road anymore. We have three subdivisions that are proposed to go in over the next couple of years. And if even one of those goes in, we're gonna really, really struggle maintaining that road. And very likely we're gonna have to take some fairly quick, drastic efforts like we did on the other two sections of 53rd Street where we completely removed the surfacing, turned it into gravel for a period of time and or paved it, which we've ended up doing with both of those. So I would like to work and apply for the funding for 53rd Street Project. The funding deadline for this current round is October 11th, so it's coming up very quickly. There is one other sec there's one other deadline, which will be in March, a second round of funding. KDOT has not decided their priority listing, how they're gonna judge the projects, who's gonna get funding. They don't know that matrix yet. They also don't know how much funding of the 61 million, the 50 and the 11, are they're gonna to put towards each funding opportunity. But if you apply for the first one and you don't get it, you will be into the second round. So you don't have to reapply, which is a good thing. Um, one of the other projects that I was thinking of was the intercity bike path that we had talked about that would go from Bel Air to Kichai to Park City to Valley Center. That would be another very good project. I do think that's going to rank fairly highly with WAMPO because it is a multi-community interconnected path that is not streets. So they're kind of looking to spread their money out and that's one of the things. So that's a, just a kind of a quick overview of the program. I did include in your packet um, all of the projects that we had submitted with WAMPO. So if you would like me to look at any of the other projects. Um, I do sit on the WAMPO selection board, and I have not heard anything for when that's going to start, but I am going to push the Rock Road and the Woodlawn funding. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm pretty confident push, that we push, will get push. at least those, <laughs> yes. I'm pretty confident we'll, that we'll get those at least those funded, but I'm not sure you know, the, how much additionally we'll be able to get. But this is a statewide program. They are looking at evenly distributing the money throughout the entire state. So it's going to be fairly competitive. They've already gotten quite a few submittals. So I'd kind of like to focus my time on just one or two selected proce projects. Thank you for this report. Do you have questions or comments, suggestions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things, uh, just observations. It's 53rd, or someone pointed out to me and, and validated this, but I think it's correct. 53rd Street is the only street in the metropolitan area that goes completely through 
uh, east to west in the metropolitan area. So I think it's a pretty important street. I don't. Are you are you uh, considering a, a three lane configuration for that street for that road? At this time, it would just be the two lane like we have done from Rock okay. Road yeah. through Web Road. Okay. I just wondered if, what what you were thinking there. Uh, I I'm, I think I'm okay with the two lane there, but we might want to look at turn lanes or something because of the of the future developments that we know are coming in. But that's going to be a little bit iffy right now because you don't know what those are going to look like. Um, mm -hmm. The other one that I thought might be something to think about is um, is 45th from all over to Woodlawn. Um, that's going to get a lot more traffic as we expand Woodlawn, and uh, it's it's pretty between Edgemore and Woodlawn. It's it's in, it's in need of some repair right now. But uh, that was just another one I thought was uh, would be a good one to look at. Mr. Mayor, yes, Mr. On, on this grant, is this um, a matching grant where we have to contribute 50% or is it just a grant of we get a check from the state for this money and, you know, it might cover the whole project cost? I'm just wondering, as we look at earlier in the year, we talked about kind of reserving some of our street fund for a larger road replacement project later in the year. And I think it, we're about due to get back together and kind of finalize that. And I'm wondering, will it... Will we need to reserve that that those funds for a matching contribution? It, should we get one of these grants? This is that's a very good question. This is a matching program, so if Bel Air would be awarded part of the eleven million dollars, then there's a fifteen percent non-state match. So that could be basically it's local funds unless okay. we get developers to help us out. Um, with the fifty million dollars, it's a twenty-five percent state match. Now, these grants are just construction. They do not cover design costs. They do not cover land costs, uh, any financing costs, and they do not cover construction observation. However, these plans do not have to be designed to KDOT standards. They can be designed to local standards. KDOT will review them in concept, but they will not review them for KDOT standards, which helps a lot in construction costs and design costs. All right, thank you for that clarification. That may be something for us to consider around kind of some reserving some funds to assist with with that project should we get selected. I think that'd be a good project. The only other thing that maybe came to mind is something that's been, you know, talked about a little bit in Bel Air is we do have some, some streets here in Bel Air that aren't even paved yet. Some of our older neighborhoods here in Bel Air I don't, I don't know when those would ever rise to a, you know, a priority level in the city. And so um, I, I don't know if uh, those are candidates, if that might be a candidate to think about for some many programs as well. So. It was kind of my understanding that it was more for a little bit more major roads. Mm -hmm. um, but I can certainly get with the program director and ask about the residential streets. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the city engineer? And thank you as always. Appreciate you being here. And now we'll move into ordinances, resolutions, and final actions. The uh, first thing to come before us this evening is the uh, Master uh, Pedestrian and Biking Plan. This is another WAMPO grant. Uh, the uh, Bel Air, we did receive a grant from WAMPO to prepare a master biking and walking plan. Uh, this plan will be used to guide biking and pedestrian infrastructure as well as um, when applying for, for grants. So we'll, we'll have that. Um, PEC was hired to create the plan. And see that Mitch Kaufman is here. So um, appreciate you being here from PEC to present the final draft. Uh, to us for council. I know this is something we've been talking about for for quite a while, so we're excited to hear the report. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for having me here. Uh, I'd like to thank the city staff for uh, doing a wonderful job in helping uh, prepare this plan, um, getting the word out, and the hundreds of residents that did participate in the plan. And I believe it led to a, a great plan and something that's uh, ready to move forward with. Um, we had our council workshop uh, a couple weeks ago and since then presented it to the Planning Commission, um, had a little discussion, no changes, so no changes have been made since you saw this. Um, so I think um, in an effort to keep this rather short, um, I would like to, to point you to uh, 
the priority projects. So this is a, a lot of background information in the front um, that ultimately leads to uh, the, the future network as, as shown on the slide and then the, the priority projects. Um, there's 12 of them. Um, they're listed on page 8 and illustrated on page 10. Um, and we've provided preliminary uh, planning level uh, construction cost estimates to go along with those. Um, one thing to keep in mind, and I think I mentioned this earlier, was that the, the near-term projects are not in a priority order. It's more like a, a menu to choose from as you go through your uh, capital improvement program development. Um, and it's not all about construction projects. Um, there's also priority actions uh, that the city can take um, to move uh, forward with improving biking and walking in Bel Air, um, such as partnering with the USD and working with them, um, as well as uh, um, requiring developers to, to put in sidewalks and bike paths as, as your subdivisions come online. Um, so since no changes have, have happened since our workshop, I uh, stand for any questions um, since then. Anybody have any questions for our guests this evening? Okay, well this is our final draft and and we asked a lot of questions earlier, so I appreciate being here and, and looking forward to uh, to seeing this come to fruition. So, all right. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the City of Bell Air Master Biking and Walking Plan as presented and authorize the Mayor to sign. Second. We have a first and a second. Are there any other questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. Okay, for item B, should we get here? <laughs> I'm looking, and I don't see Ted in the room. Is he down printing and making changes? Is Let me ask, is this something we need to possibly table? Legally, can we table it for two weeks? Or if we... Talk about item C. Do you guys just need a couple more minutes? Uh, you could table it. It will throw off the timing of the, the process leading to the issuance of the bonds a little bit. Uh, we have concluded that that tract should not be included. Not sure why it was in the original uh, petition and recalculated some of the numbers. Uh, and that, you're right, types, the 53rd Street. Main, and then there's some paving, huge area being assessed. The good news is, if it's excluded, it's still those assessments um, get spread across 124 properties. So the the net effect to the properties that remain in the district is not a huge one, and that's what Ted is is printing right now. We recalculated that, and he was going to bring those up so you could at least see this is what's changed. Um, in the ordinance, and that's what it, it took their assessment, um, which was proposed to be 15,000, I think, and 8,000 8, on sewer and water, and that's now zero, and that gets spread across the remaining 124 properties. So if you could delay consideration for a few minutes, I think we would have, have the information you would want, and, and you could compare individual lots and say, you know, this lot that was going to be assessed $450 is now going to be assessed $460 and at least know what the changes are and the changes mm -hmm. would be present when you consider the ordinance. Well, I'm going to look to our city attorney. How do we formally, officially flip-flop item B and C this, at this point this meeting? Um, that's a good question, Mr. Mayor. I, again, because you're under Bob's rules, I would say... Um, Hmm. That's Should we just take a break? Can't you just table it until Okay, hold, hold, hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me ask, ask Mr. Mayor, I, I had a couple of questions. Yes. I don't know if we want to, if other folks have questions, if our questions may consume enough time Let's for, do it. for this too. But I, I was a little curious as I looked through this, if you could talk a little bit about how, it, when I looked through it, it looked like all of the special assessments were spread equally, potentially based on the number of lots. Is that the standard practice? I, would get, I guess I was expecting that maybe special assessments were based on square footage of the property or something 
other than just number of lots. Can you talk about how you come up with how you're going to spread out these special assessments? Yes. Good question. Um, the only requirement is that they be spread in an equitable manner and that similarly situated property is treated in the same manner. The statute <coughs> gives some examples of, of how specials can be spread equally per lot, which is uh, here in Bel Air, it's called fractional, but if you have 25 lots, it's 1 25th per lot, so it's equally per lot frequently. Um, square footage also permitted uh, based on relative value without regard to improvements. So if you have a property that's worth $100,000 of assessed valuation and one that's worth $10,000 of assessed valuation, and you don't consider anything that's built on them, that's another method that can be used. Um, in Bel Air, for a long time, the fractional basis or equally per lot has been used in most cases. Um, and, and that sort of makes sense if you're thinking about a subdivision where every lot is pretty similarly situated, so you want, to, want those to have equal assessment <coughs> benefiting to the same degree. There were a couple uh, that were in, in this grouping that were assessed on a square footage basis, and um, the 53rd Street water main and, and improvements are, are one of those. And part of that rationale, I think, um, and this is, is developer and developers, consultants driven most of the time. They're the ones that prepare the petitions and then we at the city review them and make sure that they make sense. But um, I think in this instance where the square footage was used, it's just such a large area. And at the time there were just a handful uh, of lots that were platted. And so to try to come up with any sort of fractional basis that was equally per lot, well, there just weren't that many lots. Um, there were larger tracks that, that again, benefit from it. Um, and the rest of the just, is that that's the just dropped. Okay. Well, that would be great because we can have it. Okay. okay. So, I don't know if that answers your question. That's one of the reasons. There's nothing that, that drives it um, other than what makes <coughs> sense and is it fair in a particular situation. So, again, in, in the case of uh, these improvements that are being assessed on a square footage basis, and it's pursuant to Resolution 16-32 and 16-33, you have some platted lots, you have some large, you know, quarter sections, and so square footage works pretty well there where you, if you use square footage and you have platted lots, they're going to be close to being equal, but not exactly the same. You, you know, you deal with a curve on a cul-de-sac and somebody's going to have a few more square feet in their lot and somebody's going to have a, have a few less square feet. And so, uh, so I think that's reflected. If you look at all the lots that were assessed on a square footage basis, they're all in kind of the $400, $500 range. Uh, in assessments, and if we'd done some sort of equally per lot, then they would have been exactly the same. Um, but again, the only thing, and, and all the things we've mentioned are not the only ways you can assess it. There's some other method um, that staff and then governing body consider and decide this is the equitable way to do this. Um, sometimes you see it on, on multifamily or, or uh, maybe not multifamily, on lots that you know are going to get built and used in different ways, single family, maybe multifamily, that sometimes a, an assessment unit is used rather than kind of an equally per lot or whatever the rationale may be. And that's something that's not mentioned by statute at all. It's just sort of knowing what's there uh, in, in deciding, well, equally per lot's not really equitable in this case, and maybe equally square per square foot is not equitable, but we think if we define some sort of other assessment unit, uh, that's equitable. And so, again, it's fairly wide open, but almost universally, uh, particularly if you're dealing with platted properties here in the city of Bel Air, for a number of years, it's just been the, what I call equally per lot, or, but it's also called a fractional basis where you total up the lots. And, so that's consistent with what we typically do here in Bel Air. Is that consistent with what is typically done in the surrounding area as well? Yes. Okay. 
The other question that I had is when I look at the exhibit, uh, exhibit A1 on the second page, and you get down into the second section, there's uh, block A lot one, block A lot two, block A lot three. The, there's a sidewalk resolution, and it, it looks like the special assessment for that is only on one lot. Do you, I, I didn't quite understand that. There's not a map that accompanies we'll this. And so the rest of it. The way that I'm reading it, it looks like there's $4,000 of sidewalk assessments on, on just one lot um, where the rest of them don't have the sidewalk it's, assessment. Uh, that's not the case. You just have to flip forward a couple of pages. That, that particular development has so many lots. And it, again, factually, I don't recall why, and you're right, you probably have to look at a map as to why block A, lot one, uh, is benefiting from the sidewalk, and then you have to go all the way down to block, or lot one, block B, um, until you find the next property that benefits. I know the sidewalks are typically done sort of on a skeletal one side um, basis, and, and again, I'm sort of like you, without having the map in front of me or knowing what, um, what drove that originally in the Petition, but it's it's not very many. Uh, if you look, I guess right? There's not a lot of them that have that, right. that sidewalk line item, which makes me think that maybe the way that the sidewalk special assessments being spread is based on whose property is adjacent to it, not based on the whole neighborhood. Which was my understanding of how we typically did the special assessments was for the neighborhood. The cost of the sidewalk was spread over the entire neighborhood, and so I want to make sure we're being consistent there. Yeah, that I can't answer uh, and in some of this you know, these petitions were from a number of years ago and I don't know uh, if the city established a policy about sidewalks and who gets assessed originally for sidewalks or who who doesn't in sort of intervening years but if, if I understand your question it's well should the entire neighborhood have been assessed something even if they live across the street from it and um, I, don't. I would just say it would be my preference that that would be how the special assessments would be spread. Mm -hmm. Special assessments are so simple. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we break it down with all these over all of the with the pay, the pavement, the sewer, the sidewalk, and yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, and, I, and if you look at, at those lots that get a sidewalk special assessment, they are all being assessed exactly the same. So um, for all of the paving, sewer, sidewalk, drainage, and, and water, so that's, I mean, that's a good thing. At least there's a rationale for treating a, a set of properties uh, in, in one way, but I, I don't specifically recall the project and, and I don't know if Ted or the engineers which, it's which one are you talking about? Deer Run sidewalks where some of the lots sure. are being assessed for sidewalks and some are not. Procedurally, if if the thought was well, maybe we have some lots that we'd like to assess for the sidewalks that aren't being assessed. That right now we only have the authority to assess those lots because the owner of the property submitted a petition that says um, we want sidewalks to be constructed, and we agree that these lots will be assessed, and and other lots. Uh, would not be. So right now we have the documents in place, the petition and the resolution that say these are the properties that are going to be assessed for these things. And if we if we go in a diff different direction, that would be a change and we wouldn't be able to take care of this tonight and and would have to have some sort of an amending because we'll it's 
it's a due process thing that we assess people that weren't listed in resolutions originally. Typically, the resolutions that we pass when the developers petition us, I, d I recall them specifying the addition that they're petitioning for and which phase of the addition they're petitioning for. Do they specify individual lots in the petition? They list yes. out every single lot? Yeah. Okay. And this this one is Deer Run Edition Sidewalks Resolution 16-23. And so you're saying that if that original petition for Deer Run didn't list all of the lot, lots for the sidewalks, then we don't have the authority to change right. how that would work. Right. So that's something that we, the council that approved that would have had to review at that time. Yes, exactly. All right, you said it better than I did. But. Yeah. So there'll be a few people be a little extra surprised. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So is, is that a confirm, confirmation that that resolution did specifically say that those sidewalks were to be assessed and not, not others in that edition? Are you confirming that? Right. That that resolution would have listed four sidewalks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12 lots to be assessed. And so it's really the developer who's determining who's going to pay for the sidewalk in those cases. Right. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Normally in uh, these type of situations in the past, it's always the side of the street that has the sidewalk that gets assessed. They've never changed that as far as I know. And it, it is clearly Again, it'd be useful to have a map, and, and mm -hmm. this project was petitioned more than three years ago. But um, that—that's a very limited sidewalk, mm -hmm. and it could be that it was sort of the first phase of sidewalk, maybe for model homes, and there'd be a later phase to extend the sidewalk <laughs> deeper into the development. That I don't know, but it's—I mean, there are probably. 70, 80 lots may be being assessed as part of Deer Run addition, and only 12 um, are getting sidewalk. Again, it'd be nice to have a map or have the developer here, to, but I, that is probably as good a guess, maybe as good a thought as anyone. It's, it's maybe just for the initial phase with model homes, so there's a place to walk. And I'm, I'm going to guesstimate, too, based on what I think what Kevin's saying is correct. So if you drive in Deer Run, it's right off of Rock, of Rock Road. And you have to drive a ways before you actually hit where the houses are. So the sidewalk's going to start at Rock Road, go along where our nails live, and back. And then it'll start heading to the north and the east, and then it'll end up into Rock Spring. And so that's, that's why I was thinking, well, why would 4,000 dots seems a lot for a sidewalk? Well, that's because, uh, again, like Kevin's saying, if the developer brought in a petition and the first phase was that um, those model homes that are backed up against the lake, they had to pull that sidewalk all the way in off of rock, go past Arnell's property, which is probably... 500 feet or so before they start hitting houses and so that's why that could be expend that cost so that they're covering a lot not just in front of their house um, so I think that Kevin's probably right is why that one is high um, and probably why the developer decided to spread it to those lots um, and then I'm also because I was comparing to Rock Spring second edition you see the sidewalks there are a thousand dollars and so those are you know smaller lots they don't have that cover in but what's also interesting because we've talked about it tonight you'll see that it, they've got a uh, paving water sidewalk and sewer all the way down to block four lot 13 and then block one lot one there's only sewer so that's a case where in this particular piece there was uh, another 20 lots that only had sewer attached to them and so we already had that issue come up tonight where someone had bought a house and there's only partials spread at that time. And then they'll come back later when the streets and the water and the sidewalks go in and then have that assessed too. So um, 
and there's a lot of projects in here with a lot of different things happening. So, Mr. Mayor, yes. um, this is this is you know, from my experience doing mortgages. It, this is something somewhat typical, anyway. That assessments come at different times, right? I mean, yes. if you can you can go on the county website and look at what specials are left and. You'll have this dropping off in the, you know, 10 years, and this one 11, 12, 13. You know, this is this is very typical to have it in starting to be assessed in different because it's built at different times. So the sidewalks are, are unique, but it's not unusual at all to think, well, we've got to have a water main to serve all phases of this development, and so we're going to assess that now in connection with the first phase. So you'll have first phase lots. They get water main, but you also have all the other phases to get the water main under my example, and nothing else at that time. But those first phase also get their interior paving, uh, service lines, and so yeah, it, just confirmation of what you're saying. When you phase things, there are going to be some overlap, and the way they get engineered and designed, that makes sense to do drainage. Great example. Usually, drainage for the entire area gets. Or frequently gets taken care of all at once so you may have a, the, the entire addition being assessed early on for the drainage but maybe not for their street sewer water and individual improvements until several years later when you get to phase four or something Mr. Wright, yes. one more question how, how far in, in advance were the notices mailed out to the homeowners that are affected by these special assessments I'm, uh, I'm curious yeah I, I just want to make sure that everyone has had an adequate time if, May, may, heaven forbid, hopefully there's not another lot, you know, buried in this list somewhere that maybe shouldn't be being special assessed. I want to make sure they've had adequate time to yeah. bring so, it to our attention. So by statute, um, there's published notice and mailed notice, each of which has to occur at least 10 days in advance of the hearing. In this case, it was closer to two. Publication was uh, two weeks ago this coming week. Thursday, so that would have been like 12 days, and then the mailing was on also Thursday, Thursday or Friday. So um, 11 days, 12 days. But everyone received a mailing about this, not just the publication. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Which is yeah, that state statute. This year was a just making sure was a Herculean effort yeah. by Ted and his staff because there are 21 projects, lots of I've, projects. I've filled about 30 calls uh, over the last two weeks. So I, I'm, a lot of people have contacted me, explained the process. Um, and seeing there's not too many people here, it makes me a little happy that we got through to a lot of them. Um, yeah, Kevin, Kevin did a lot of work on this one because there's a little, some of the, the only really uh, issue is when they get broken down into tracks. The lot and blocks are very easy. You can't really screw a lot and block number up. Um, the the tracks make things a little more difficult, don't they, Kevin? Yeah, the tracks uh, and, and different different uh, well, areas that yeah. doesn't have that's not plotted. And on on the assessment roll that you're seeing now, which is the one we referenced earlier, where a property is being removed and it's for the 53rd Street paving and, and water. I mentioned this earlier. There were a couple of tracks <clears throat> that at the time the petitions were submitted were unplatted and now they've been platted. So then you have to match the platted lots to the legal, the meets and bounds legal description that was included originally. And I think we did that. Um, and again, in, in terms of what, what I would call track six, which uh, is this gentleman's property. Not sure why it, it was included originally. Um, certainly will benefit from these improvements. And which one is that again? I'm sorry. It's uh, if you have what is being in that map, you go to the fourth page. Okay, there. I just want to make sure because when we make the motion that we have that taken out. Okay. But so that leads to, to my question then, um, Mrs. City Attorney, you know, for us to come up with, with the motion, we have all these different ones. Do we need to say anything differently in the motion than what is written for this to take place with this one being deleted to make sure that this gentleman is not special assessed as he should have been? You don't need to, but you can uh, reference 
Did you get? I just want to make sure our city attorney and our bond council is satisfied with our motion. Okay. Specifically. <laughs> Do we know what, what reservation? Yeah, it's yeah. So we can just say as revised, and that'll clarify. Since this has been entered into official record now. Okay. And if Exhibit A as revised. Okay. Exhibit A, A1 as revised uh, with uh, reference to paving resolution 16, R1632. You see the note that the column, second column on the sheet you were handed, you mentioned that specific reference and that reference. That would be the most clear. couple of things I would add, if, if I could. Uh, this is the purpose of the hearing, uh, so we can work through these things. And I, you know, that petition was signed and submitted three and a half years ago, and uh, and that property should not have, have been included. And so uh, that's the good news. That's why we have these hearings. Sometimes, yep. you know, there are no changes to be made. Everything is just fine. Um, the second thing, if you say this is a, this is a rarity in, in my right, yeah. Um, the second thing, and, and this may be useful just as an example, if you look at at the pages or the revised portion of the assessment roll as it relates to um, the paving and the water projects under resolution 16-32 and 16-33, block one, lot one, Rock Spring. Previously, before the revision, was assessed $456 for paving and $189 for water, and that's changing to $472 and $196. So as I mentioned before, it's a change, but it's not a huge change because this is being assessed against such a large, large area. But one final thing uh, I will add, a number of these properties, uh, particularly as you go east of Rock Road, get assessed a benefit fee, uh, and we we haven't talked about that, but a number of years ago, the city constructed water and sewer mains to sort of open up that area for development, and it was in connection with an initial development, and uh, Ty, I don't know if you're, maybe it was first phase of Rock Spring or something, but the city designed it so that it was going to serve a, a large area and contemplated that whenever additional properties are platted and developed and connect and benefit from that sewer main and water main, they will pay um, a benefit fee, which is a statutory uh, term that references this very thing. If you make a sewer main or water main improvement, uh, somebody's not assessed or some property's not assessed because it hasn't developed yet or it, it doesn't benefit yet, but in the future it may develop, then you can impose a benefit fee. So we do that now on a lot of uh, the Rock Spring and additions and those things heading east because they all are benefiting from that sewer main and, and water main. And I think it's going to be similar on on the 53rd Street, as I'm calling it, the paving and the water uh, assessments that we just revised when areas, including this gentleman's property, if he ever approaches the city and says, I want to plant and develop that property, it undoubtedly benefits from these improvements, just like the property next door, which is being assessed, which is within the city limits. And so uh, something to keep in mind, if that property develops and is part of the city in the future, it will pay a benefit fee if the governing body at that time chooses to impose a benefit fee on them. Uh, because at that point, they'll be similarly situated to all the other properties. You're benefiting from the water and the paving, and you're within the city limits, and you've platted, and you're developing. and so. Uh, something to keep in mind that I thought it would be worth mentioning tonight. So, question on this uh, property that we've just determined that should not be assessed, and it is going to raise the 
prices for other properties. I think this is all Rock Spring. Am I correct about that? E yes. Yeah, okay. Rock Spring so, addition and Rock Spring second. And then there's still some large unplatted tracks that, that are also being assessed that when they get platted will be, be assessed okay. individually. So th those uh, citizens have been advised of a certain price that they're going to be assessed, and now we're changing those numbers. Um, are, we, are we in a position that we would be telling them, hey, because of some calculation issues or, or misunderstandings or whatever the issue is here, uh, have had to change the numbers for them so that they don't get a surprise here when they see the new numbers? Yeah, good question. Um, by law, th this change isn't significant enough to, to trigger any requirements. Um, if it was more than 10%, I would tell you, yeah, you, you need to give them some notice other than the than final notice. I mean, that's what will happen next. If you pass the ordinance, it approves the final assessment rule, and then property owners get notice <coughs> of that final assessment, and they have the opportunity to prepay it in whole or in part. Um, so legally, no, um, because it's, it's such a minor change, and, and we're still complying with the original petition and resolution. But... Um, as I said earlier, I think if it was a significant change, more than 10%, uh, then, then we should give them additional notice and, and an opportunity to be heard. That's, that's what the result would be, um, an opportunity to be heard. You saw one number, had an opportunity to come to a hearing, you're going to see a different number. If it was significantly different, then you have another opportunity to be heard. Uh, if it's this small, uh, it's not legally required. doesn't mean you, you couldn't do something different if you so chose. So what was said in the original notice to, to the residents in these areas, or the citizens in these areas, were they told, hey, the, uh, the, the amount is estimated to be, or were they told the amount is? Were they given a fixed number or an estimate, or, or what was said to them? The, the mailing is their, and it's, quote, proposed, proposed assessment. Um, so, proposed assessment. Yeah. Okay. Not estimated, but sort of similar language. And so that's, that's the same as Stone. Stone. Yeah. Yeah. This is what we're proposing to assess. We're going to have a hearing. We're going to work through any final changes, and then a final assessment okay. will be determined. And it did, you think the letter said there would be a final assessment after the hearing? Yeah, it does say that. that okay. Once the oh, ordinance great. is adopted, they'll get notice. And it actually advises them early that once they get their final notice they're going to have an opportunity to prepay and, and the period of time they would have to prepay and then they'll get uh, again. I just didn't want the, to be some expectation that we, they, they had a certain number and we didn't correctly state what that what that number really represented but it sounds like you did. So. No and, Where, and a really good question. It sounds like we did that so that's good. Yeah. Good question, and I, a thought I actually had when we were making changes, sort of, well, how much is this going to change the assessments? And again, it's it's not much, probably um, two or three percent, yes, maybe. Um, and I was kind of relieved that it wasn't a significant change because that would trigger some different considerations, <coughs> just as you said. Should we give these property owners additional notice of what the proposed assessment is? Okay, thank you. Well, Kevin, I appreciate you being here. This makes up for all the times that you've come here, and we haven't had questions for you, so. <laughs> I may like those times. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But Again, this is, though, this is the purpose of the hearing, and I'm yep. I, frankly not surprised when you have 21 projects mm -hmm. to assess. And, you know, just on, on the 53rd Street project we're talking about, it's 125 parcels, and that includes the large tracks that haven't been platted yet. I mean, someday it's probably going to be 200, 300 lots that are being assessed for this. So there's a lot of property, uh, a lot of property owners involved, and, and uh, so not surprised. Big and complex, and we, we had the one, and the public hearing worked, so the process worked, and we've rectified it. So I want to thank you and, and thank our staff, and uh, thank the gentleman who's not here anymore, but for bringing this to our attention. and. 
Glad we could get it fixed, and it uh, sounds like from what our city attorney says, we can go ahead and take action tonight um, that does fix this. That would be my recommendation. Mr. Mayor, I do have a, a comment and potentially a question. Um, first of all, I just wanted to uh, say uh, to Mr. Woolley uh, to thank him for coming up and telling us about this. So he did identify a mistake, and that, um, as our council said, that's the purpose of this hearing. So um, it's nice to see that our process here is allowing uh, mistakes to be corrected. So I commend Mr. Woolley for bringing this to our attention, and um, I commend the city for having the people here in place uh, to be able to administer that correction um, in a swift manner. Thank you for answering all those questions and helping us sort this out. Um, I just wanted, I thought it was worth just mentioning um, that uh, someone might say, well, how could this, how could this have happened? Well, um, in looking at the map of this location, Mr. Woolley's property is quite literally surrounded by Bel Air. It's, his land is an island in the middle of Bel Air, and his jurisdiction is Sedgwick County. So if you just kind of looked at the area, you probably would assume maybe that was in Bel Air because it's completely surrounded by Bel Air. So it's not like this was on the edge of the city or something on the outskirts. He's quite literally surrounded by Bel Air. So. Uh, I guess I can kind of see in looking at that that kind of mistake could could it have easily uh, happened. So uh, um, I was just running the quick review of the numbers, and it did look like, uh, as you said, the the changes to the rest of the properties is less than ten percent. So um, on the advisement of council, I'm certainly okay with moving ahead with this uh, with the amended. Uh, resolution or uh, ordinance. Is that a motion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> I motion to approve um, with, uh, <coughs> a, do, I state, do I state the ordinance first and then add the amendment at the end? Okay, I motion to approve an ordinance levying special assessments on certain property to pay the costs of internal improvements in the city of Bel Air, Kansas, as heretofore authorized by resolution numbers R-16-10, R-16-11, R-16-12, R-16-18, R-16-19, R-16-20, R-16-21, R-16-22, R-16-23, R-16-24, R-16-25, R-16-26, R-17-04, R-16-28, R-16-29, R-16-32, R-16-33, R-17-07, R-17-08, R-17-09 and R-16-37 and with and providing for the collection of such special assessments and authorize the mayor to sign pending the amendment to exhibit A1 uh, amending R-16-32 and R-16-33. Second. Has been the first and second. Before I call for the vote, I just want clarification from our city attorney that we're yes. just fine with this to take this one out, okay? Since it is an ordinance, it does call for a roll call vote. Uh, Councilmember Benaj? Aye. Councilmember Elsoff? Aye. Councilmember Haas? Aye. Councilmember Martin? Aye. Councilmember Smith? Aye. <clears throat> Motion passes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now we're on to item C here. Here um, for water main updates. The 2019 
water fund budget contains money to repair and replace existing water mains. There is an area of Aurora Park that staff has identified uh, for upsizing. Uh, current pipe size is four inches and staff believes it should be eight, as well as having several repairs on this pipe in the past. Our city engineer is here to explain. I know it seems like we talk a lot about water pipes, especially in the older part there, and, and certainly in Aurora Park, if they're four inches and need to be eight, and we have the money budgeted, um, I'm looking forward to this report and, and us taking action on that. Well, first of all, I would like to thank Council for providing us with the funds this year to be able to make some improvements. It's been a long time coming, and I know the residents are have spoke with myself personally as well as our staff about the aging infrastructure as well as the pressure in this area of Aurora Park. Now, I, while I mentioned the pressure, it is within KDH&E guidelines, but even the lowest portion of the guidelines, sometimes you wish that you had a little bit more. So what this project is going to do is going to replace the water main along, Park, or along 39th Street from the connection which is just north of 38th and Parkwood, come around the corner and to match in at 39th and Harding. And when we were originally scoping this project, we thought it was gonna come in quite a bit higher than what it did. We were estimating closer to the amount where Dooling and Meese were over the 200,000 range. So since it came in significantly low under budget, we still have a fair amount left in the fund for replacement. So we did ask McCullough, the low bid, to give us a quote for extending the replacement up through a portion of Parkwood, which would take it to the next intersection. I have that quote and we'll be providing it to you at your next council meeting. I will tell you it's about $70,000. So that will is still within budget and will mm -hmm. get us further on down the road on replacement. Uh, staff did work with all four contractors and it was the contractors really the ones that came up and said you know directional drilling this water main is going to be a much better co lower cost alternative instead of where they just would open up open cut and dig a trench through everybody's front yards so this is going to be predominantly directionally drilled so it's the the, the water main pipe is just going to be drilled through the ground you're not going to see open cuts or open trenches, except where we have fire hydrants or bends or connections or service lines nice. that are gonna be reconnected. All of the service lines are going to be replaced from the water meter to the water main. They will have new water meters, they will have new water um, meter boxes. So there will be some improvements there. We will not be touching the residence line from the water meter to the house other than to make that connection. So it will be a fairly significant improvement. The residences should see, once this is done, a fairly good bump in pressure. So we're really excited about this opportunity, looking forward to bringing you that mm -hmm. change order at your next meeting. Now, I'm here for questions. I guess my first question is, so with the directional drilling, I, I really am I'm excited to, to hear that that can be done now. What um, will residents there, what will the interruption be to their water service? We, we've designed the improvements to keep it away from the existing line. Right. So really the only interruptions in service that residents should see is when we make the connections to the individual homes and when we make the connection to the overall water main on each end. And those interruptions would sh should be less than a day. And I, I, I'm not going to give, I, I would hope they would be a couple hours, but I'm not right. going to. I, I, I know it's on record now, but, right. you know, a less than a day. I just want to make cognizant of that because, yeah, we certainly don't want residents to actually go a long time without water in their home Definitely. Um, for that. And then, of course, we do, we'll give proper notice. And yes. Them on that. What is the uh, timeline? When is this expected to be done? That is one thing that I forgot to ask. Okay. <laughs> but Sorry. I would imagine that it's going to get started within the next month. Nice. It's a nice Christmas present. Yes. Mm. It, it, it will be done this year. I can guarantee you that. And I'm, I'm, I also want to commend you, too, on finding a contractor that came in so 
a reputable one who, who does good work with this drilling and coming so much under budget that we're going to be able to do additional that we had not even thought that we could do this year. So I want to commend you yeah, for Yeah, we were planning on doing that next year. Right, <laughs> so. right. We're already a, a year ahead on that. So and I'm sure the Aurora Park residents so. will appreciate that. So but, okay. we have any other questions for our uh, city yeah, manager I, or anything? I have a couple questions. Uh, one is, and I think I know the answer to this, but just, just to make sure we're on the same page, which direction is the water flowing? Is it flowing from the six inch into the eight inch or from the eight inch into the six inch? It actually flows both ways. There's not really a direction of water. It depends on where the demand is. The entire system is pressurized at all times. So when there is a demand from one location, it will flow both ways to meet that demand. So I can't really give you a strict answer on that. Yeah, okay, that, that, that's fine. That's fine. I, I couldn't tell from the diagram what, what that was, but that's good. Thank you. Um, the other is, uh, in our notices to the residents, do we tell them, hey, there is a possibility with additional pressure, they could have some internal fixture issues, that their, their fixtures haven't been used to this additional pressure? We can certainly add that to the notice that, and I will work with the city attorney on the specific wording of that. Okay, thank you. I think that would be important one thing you don't want to have happen is somebody's fixture break and you say it's all wrong. <laughs> right? Okay, and thank we, you. Yep, we will stay within the kdh &E guidelines for pressures. So sure. in, nowhere in town are we towards the high end of the pressure. Pressures. So, but yes, <laughs> fixtures that were not appropriate or, you know, we're not used to receiving those pressures, you may see differences. Any other questions for city attorney? Mr. Mayor, yes. I move to accept the quote from McCullough Excavation at a price of $141,330 for upsizing water mains in certain areas of Aurora Park and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. second. First and second. Any other questions or comments before I call for the vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, well that's our three agenda item agenda for the evening. A discussion of future issues, as I mentioned at uh, the beginning of the meeting, um, wondering does uh, the very <coughs> next day, Wednesday the 9th, does that work for everybody? So that for does, not, yeah, yeah, does not work. Pittsburgh, Kansas that day, and the one I return is uncertain. It's about a three-hour drive. Okay. What about Thursday the 10th? It would work better. Thursday the 10th? Could do that. I will mention that is the planning commission meeting, but we can have them meet in the community room. All right. Well, then let's move it to the tenth. If you guys are okay with that. Okay. And we'll do that. I have no need for an executive session. Wait a minute. Does Wait anybody a minute. else? Wait a minute. Uh, on the uh, council workshop. Can I add something? Oh. Mm hmm How about December? That's what I'm adding. <laughs> Holidays and Christmas and New Year's be my last year to tell you guys. Okay. We can certainly do that. Well, that way they can, the employees can plan right. ahead of time. They can yeah. call Grandma and Grandpa and say, we're coming home. We can add that to the agenda. Other agenda items, Ty, that you want to... Uh, yeah. So we've got three that that so far um, we are working on the franchise agreements uh, for AT and T and West Star. Um, usually those are twenty year agreements, and both of those have expired. So Jackie and I are working with each company. Uh, there's also in, in that there's franchise fees, which uh, the city has paid. Uh, for from those companies and so there's talk discussion in, in that as well so we'll have those two ready to discuss and then for the last um, year basically uh, staff been working on making some updates to our entire personnel policy so we'd like to have you review that as well so those are the three things that staff would like to um, talk with council about that's a pretty big item Ty. <laughs> we're gonna have a lot of time to talk <laughs> And Westar, of course, will be Evergy. 
Yes, that's that correct. Did we need to have an item on the agenda to talk about the remaining uh, street fund budget? I know we'd said September, October was when we needed to do that, and we're at that time of year. I know there's the grant thing in play, so I'm curious how we should proceed with planning for those projects at this point. Yeah, that was another, after the discussion tonight, that was another thought that I had is maybe we need to have Ann talk a little bit about where, <coughs> what we've done so far on street projects and if there's anything else that we need to uh, schedule. Okay. Right. Anything else? As I said earlier, I have no need for an executive session as a member of staff or council. Mr. Mayor, yes. a motion to be adjourned. Second. First and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. We are adjourned at 835.